this off. Yeah. Hold on one sec. Okie dokie. We're ready. Good evening. This meeting is being held pursuant to and in compliance with ordinance number 20-A-16, an ordinance to ensure the continuity of government during the COVID-19 disaster. Opportunities for, for the public to access and participate in the electronic meeting will be posted on the www.albemarle.org forward slash community forward slash county dash calendar when available. And so with that, this is the Planning Commission, May 18th, 2021 at 601. Could you see if we have a quorum, sir? Madam. Do you want me to call? Yes, please. Would you call the quorum, right. madam? Call, yes, the, call the roll. Mr. Bailey. Present. Mr. Keller. Present. Ms. Firehawk. Here. Mr. Randolph. Present. Mr. Bivens. Yes. Ms. Moore. Present. And Mr. Claiborne. Present. Thank you. Thank you. We have a quorum, so I call the meeting to order. Are there any other matters? Are there matters not listed on the agenda from the public, madam? There are not. Thank you. Is there no items on our consent agenda? Can we go first to SP 2021-02, St. John Family Life and Fitness Center, and may we here have the receive the staff report? Yes, let me pull it up. Okay. Do you see a forest? I don't see any trees, unless it's at night. Oh, yes, there's a forest. Okay, great. I hope that's not Pacific Heights. Uh, no. Um, good evening, commissioners. My name is Mariah Gleason. I'm a senior planner in the planning division of the Community Development Department in Albemarle County. Tonight, I'm going to be presenting for your consideration special use permit request SP 2021-00002, St. John Family Life and Fitness Center. The subject property for this proposal is located at 1569 St. John Road on tax map parcel 6678. The property is located in the rural area about 0.6 miles south of the intersection of Gordonsville Road and St. John Road. Parcels surrounding the property are generally used for residential and agricultural uses. There are two existing buildings on the 6.1 acre parcel. The larger building to the north is St. John Baptist Church, located directly behind the the church is a small cemetery. The second building on the property is a single story frame building that was a historic Rosenwald school. This, the building was constructed around 1923 as a school for rural African American students until 1954 when schools were desegregated. The applicant is requesting to adaptively reuse the historic school building as a local community center. The applicant's narrative states that they plan to use the renovated space to offer an exercise room, a display room with amenities that include a library, computer, and museum to share the building's history. The renovated space will also offer multiple meeting areas for groups, classes, lectures, and workshops. The building is approximately 1,500 square feet in size. The applicant is not proposing extensive external changes to the site to accommodate the use. That said, there will be some on-site improvements to make the proposed community set community center building handicap accessible. During the review of this proposal, no outstanding concerns were identified by staff or members of the public, in which case I'll make my presentation brief. Um, staff found a number of factors favorable to the proposal, including the restoration and preservation of historically and culturally significant local building that the proposed use would act as a publicly accessible educational resource and that the proposed use will provide services and support to rural area residents. No unfavorable factors were identified. To preserve the factors that were found favorable, staff recommends the following four conditions. The applicant has indicated that they are agreeable to these conditions as well. So this actually concludes staff's presentation. Um, the commission has the report, so if you have any questions regarding information provided here or in the staff report, I would be happy to elaborate. 
can you unshare for us, please? So I can see everything. I can share everyone. Thank you. Just for a second. Other questions? Other questions for for um, for Ms. Leeson? No, I, I just have one short one. Did, did I see a historic marker on in one of your slides? Because I didn't. Yes, there was. There was a historic marker, I think, that was applied for and received. Well, in two in twenty sixteen, they there received approval for a marker. Perhaps someone, and that's about the school, or is it about the the, the church? And well, maybe somebody can speak to that when we get there. That's all right. Maybe, maybe it's the about applicant. the school. Maybe, maybe the applicant can speak to it. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so since we have no no other questions for Mariah, okay, then we'll go and hear from the applicant. And I don't know who is present, who's speaking this evening. Jody, is that you? Are you speaking? Uh, um, Becky, uh, Miss Kenny is going to start. Okay. Uh, okay. Chair Bivens, thank you. Okay. Welcome, Miss Kenny. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity to share with you our story and history of our nonprofit. My name is Rebecca Kenny, and I'm the board president, and also present uh, is our vice president, Pastor Kevin Hawkins. In addition to uh, us, we have Jody Lahendra and also Kathy Gaston both of uh, Building Goodness team members, both of both Building Goodness team members. Thank you for this opportunity today. Our mission, with our mission, we will provide physical, educational, and spiritual programs that will enhance the participants in living a better quality of life. For purpose, we will be located in the renovated elementary school built in 1922 and identified as one of the 382 historical African-American Rosenwald schools in Virginia. This is one of seven in Albemarle County built and will be the only one available to the public once renovated. Our goal is to preserve the history of this unique period in Southern African-American education. We will, <clears throat> excuse me, we will continue the legacy of education established in the past and to the future with the education of mind, body, and soul. Our first goal is to restore and preserve our former historical Rosenwald School, which is where education began for the Carpan community of African American students. That would include me and my mother and my siblings. And this is the story for so many of the alumni that are still living in the community. Uh, if they're not there, their, um, their legacy will carry on with their families that still live there. This will be the home for our community center and our fitness center. The programs offered will be available to anyone wishing to exercise attend classes or workshop, workshops. In addition, you will be able to spend time in our resource library or walk down memory lane in our museum and experience the environment of learning from the African-American community during that time. The chart that you have in front of you now is a slide of the building goodness of our two, the two participants from our um, center, from the center a nonprofit, as well as all the people who are donating their precious skills and knowledge from the Building Goodness Foundation. As you can see, this is a well thought out project with people who have skills and knowledge. They have designed and constructed a team that has laid out plans and designs for our electrical work, for our architect work, for our plumbing work, for um, HVAC work, elect I think I say electric, but, but they're just a well laid out group that have our plans all laid out for us and we're grateful to them. 
and they highly support us and we're thankful for them. Since 2011, we have accomplished quite a bit. We have, of course, we have our uh, board of directors as well as committee members. We have a 501c status that was also uh, achieved in 2011 <clears throat> and 2016. As you mentioned, we have a highway marker. In 2018, we, uh, we, we completed a septic system that uh, with private funds from uh, donors and also from the Charlottesville Area Community Foundation, which has been very supportive towards us uh, with, uh, with the Bama uh, Dave Matthews uh, grant. Uh, they contribute towards the septic system and that is complete. In 2019, we received a $75,000 grant from the federal government and that is to, was to stabilize the building. In addition to that 75,000, we also received another 15,000 from CACF. And that is complete now. So we have completed the stabilization of the building, the septic system. We also listed with the help of Nile Bates um, on the National Registry and also Department of Historical Resources. In 2019, we received that uh, achievement. And then in 2020, we were blessed with the Building Goodness Foundation to help us with the phase three of our renovation, which is the interior part of, of the uh, renovation. Um, we also, for its funding, additional funding is required. It is quite a large project. Uh, in addition, we have uh, submitted two other grants, another one to the uh, federal government which is this Africa American Civil Rights Grant. Uh, we're requesting this time $108,000. We will know the results of that request um, in June. By the end of June, we should know whether we have that $108,000. We also request another $10,000 from Bama Works, and we'll know from them also in June. And we look forward to and those results, and we feel very positive about that. Um, as far as when we, an additional funding is required, and we will be working with private donors, uh, fundraisers, additional grants uh, to achieve that uh, uh, goal. Uh, for as timeline is concerned, uh, we um, project that if subject to availability of funds, that we can complete this project by the end of the summer and early fall. Thank you very much. Miss, mm -hmm. okay. so someone else, Jody, are you coming along now? Yeah, Jody, yes, I'm I sorry. Am. Jody, I, uh, I, will, I will just uh, uh, quickly go through a few images, uh, Chair Bivens. Uh, Ms. Gleason covered pretty much the location, uh, the timeline for the building um, is here. Uh, and these are the early shots, photos of the school once it was completed. Um, the Rosenwald program uh, and Tuskegee were very careful in recording the schools that were built. Um, and the, uh, to, to talk a little bit more about the Rosenwald program, uh, this was a creation between Booker T. Washington and Tuskegee Institute and Julius Rosenwald, the president of Sears Roebuck, uh, to fund uh, over 5,000 schools through the rural South for the education of African Americans from about 1912 to uh, 1932. Um, and as uh, Ms. Kenny pointed out, there are seven constructed in Albemarle County, uh, five of them still remain. Um, but uh, of those, um, they are either residences or uh, abandoned uh, derelict buildings. Uh, only about a tenth of the 5,000 still remain in the country, uh, and about a third of them, uh, a third of those built in Virginia remain. Mm -hmm. um, I should uh, point or right here, um, Ms. Gleason also talked about the few uh, exterior changes we are making. Um, uh, they're very small, uh, a couple of sidewalks, a handicapped ramp, um, and then re 
reopening um, the uh, one of the historic doors that was closed up during its conversion to a residence. Uh, inside, um, it was uh, through my uh, on-site research, I discovered that uh, almost 85% of the interior finishes still remain underneath the um, renovations and added uh, drywall put in by the uh, house conversion. Um, and uh, I document, uh, I was able to document the changes uh, created by that house conversion. Um, for our proposed adaptive reuse, uh, we are restoring the interiors, restoring the finishes, uh, the doors, and we are constructing a new exterior ramp. Um, and then we are putting in new walls um, that will be complying with the secretary's standards for rehabilitation. Sorry about the helicopter, it's Pegasus. Um, <laughs> for rehabilitation and that they will be obviously modern changes to the building. And you can see an elevation of the ramp. Uh, we, we are uh, complying, we believe, with several comprehensive plan goals, objectives for the rural areas, objective one, objective three. Um, we believe we are complying with those. And for the historic cultural scenic resources, we believe we're complying with objective two, three, and four. And I'm past my 10 minutes, so I will stop. Thank you. Thanks. Are there questions for the applicant? Corey, and then Tim. Corey, then Tim. Jody, and it's great to see you and the rest of the design team, my friend. Uh, this quick question, is there any thought about now or in the future that there would be any exterior interpretive signage or exterior displays outside the building located on site? Uh, frankly, I haven't even thought about that. So I'm going to let uh, Ms. Kinney um, uh, talk about that. I'm not sure that she has thought about it. The only thing I, that comes to mind is that we are planning and we haven't decided where it would be located, is a memorial uh, patio. And that has been since 2011 when we started the fundraiser by brick. And these bricks are inscribed with uh, memory of people, you know, who you like to remember, uh, have in your memory of, and contribute to this memory of this uh, project. So the only thing I can think of would be the patio, the memorial patio but we're not sure where it's going to be located because we got to be careful as to where we locate it. And, and Becky, what about signage for the um, fitness center, family and fitness center itself? The signs. Will there be signage? I, you know, we haven't thought about that yet. <laughs> I'm at, That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no. Certainly fine. I just wanted to put the question out there. I do sometimes on these projects you have um, whether it's statues or the signage, maybe like at the battlefields, for example, that kind of signage to the post that might tell stories and so forth. And so, if that is part of the future plans, just give some careful thought on where it might go on the site. I love the project. Thank you. I kind of wanted to add as well. We already have a historical marker there located in front of the building now for the school yes for, for the, school. the school yes mm -hmm. Tim well I just want to congratulate Miss Kenny and and Pastor Hawkins um, I was fortunate to be at the uh, 2016 dedication oh. of the state marker and the celebration <laughs> that you've all Great. had and you welcomed us into your into your community it was really a wonderful experience and uh, you know I think the, uh, the survey that the Preservation Virginia undertook of Rosenwald schools starting in 2013. I'm gonna put the link on for the commissioners to see all of the data for the state that Jody was re referring to. But this has been a great project. You all had a vision from the beginning of what you wanted to do. And it's really exciting for us as appointed officials to see when there's a vision and then it's, thoughtfully worked through and you all are achieving it. And we're 
really excited to see that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Are there others? Questions for the applicant? Okay, I have a, I have a, I have a question. One of the conditions is that the days of operation will be from Monday to Saturday. And so my question is, does the, does St. John's have a space that I would call sort of a church hall or a parish hall? Do you have an internal space there so that if there was a, let's say if there was a special event on a Sunday, would you ever need to use that space? We have a fellowship hall ourselves in the sanctuary currently. So right now- I need that space. You will not need that space. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure because I know sometimes around uh, when families come together or when there's a reunion, sometimes there may be a need for space on, on a Sunday. And I just wanted to just make sure that that everybody was okay that this is a Monday through Saturday use of the space. Okay. Um, Madam, do we have anyone in the in the uh, waiting to speak in the public? Carolyn. No, we do not. Okay. Then are there any other any other comments that you'd like to share with us before we take it back to ourselves to discuss? Are you, you speaking to the applicants, Chair yeah. Bivens? Yeah. Um, I don't. Uh, Ms. Kenny, uh, Pastor yeah. Hawkins. I would just like to thank you for taking the, up the time to, to hear our presentation. And we're looking forward to hearing your results. Thank you, ma'am. I did tell those comments. So then on that note, I will bring it back to the committee and um, hear what perhaps we might have discussions. Karen. Yeah, I, I didn't ask any questions uh, because it was such a well-presented application. Uh, I really want to commend you for your work. That's really all I have to say. I think it's a great application and I'm I'm so glad that you all have spent all the years and diligence to bring it to this point. Thank you. Anyone else? Rick, please. Thank you. I would echo everything Karen and Tim said. Well, I'm not hearing a lot of conversation. This is, this is interesting for us. We don't have usually don't have a lot to say except for, you know, yes, Daniel. I, I don't have much to say other than say I'm excited to see it actually come out, you know be completed and be able to visit and learn more about the site and its history. So thank you for this application. Well, then uh, I will just sort of, yes, Corey. I'll go last, uh, Mr. Chairman. I understand that. So I would only say that I would encourage you to give some serious thought to being able to put some interpretive signs around the project when you do finish it. And let me connect this to a reason why I'm, why I'm stressed. I will stress that with you. Because recently the Charlottesville Albemarle Tourist Bureau has said that one of the things that it's seriously considering is putting together sort of a route to, to lift up black history in this area. And so I would hope since you're the only, since you're the only Rosenwall uh, school that would be open to the public that you would be on that route. And so the other interesting thing is that where you sit you sit in an area that's got a number of wineries and it's got a cidery. So you have lots of people who will be in that area just doing the other things that people seem to be promoted for. And how wonderful that as they're driving down 231, they might take a right-hand turn and learn something about the other part of our community that's been here for all these years. And so I would encourage you to work with, uh, I'm sure there are people in town and probably Tim knows someone who he could help to direct to to sort of make sure that you get those interpretive signs. And so I, I uh, Could I respond, Chair Bevins? Sure, oh, well, not really, but- Oh, 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 forgive me. Not really. 
<laughs> oh, but you can at the super for the supervisors. Okay. I would, I, okay. I was just going to uh, confirm uh, what you have recommended that we have already. Uh, that is part of the proposal that we have okay. made. Um, and so, uh, you know, on that on that piece, uh, I think I'm going to let Corey go for it because he's got something he probably wants to get done so we can, you know, get you all home and move on to some other business. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I echo everything you said. That was the reason for my question about the interpretive signage on the site. It, it will just be amazing to be able to attract people, even when it's not open, to come by and read and learn and so forth uh, while they're in the area. And uh, I would like to say also, I'm just so proud that this is actually in my district. It's not too often where you get something that's not the run of the mill, right? You can sit up here and smile and be like, yeah, I'm really proud of that. And uh, as a fellow architect, I can also sleep at night because I know Jody is on the project and I know it's in really, really good hands. And as an architect, I'll also say these are the kinds of projects that breathe new life into the community. And so uh, with that, I'm prepared to uh, give my enthusiastic support uh, behind this project. So uh, if there's a motion available, if there's no other discussion, I'm happy to do if Mariah, are you kind enough to put the motion back up for us, please? Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Um, I move to recommend approval of SP 2021-00002 St. John Family Life and Fitness Center with the reasons and conditions stated in the staff report. Is there a second? Second. Is that Karen? Yes, sir. Seconded by Karen, please. Is there any discussion? There is no discussion. So could you, uh, Carolyn, could you call the roll, please? And Mariah, could you unshare us? Thank you. Mr. Claiborne? <laughs> Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Bivens? Aye. Mr. Randolph? Aye. Ms. Firehawk? Aye. Mr. Peller? Aye. And Mr. Bailey. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. So Ms. Kenny, Mr. Lahondro, and Pastor Hawkins, this has been approved by at least this part of the process by the Planning Commission. And it will be going forward with our recommendation to the Board of Supervisors, which I'm sure um, Ms. Gleason will be working with you for, for that next date. And I have to say to my colleagues, if you have not had the opportunity to go to this space, to this, to this location and just stand there, I will say, and I, you know, I never take these kinds of personal um, pers um, points of personal privilege, but on this one, you just indulge me for a second. So all of us, I, I found out that my, that my ancestors are from Danville where there's also another host of these, a host of these the Rosenwald schools. And you may or may not know the black people in, in your lives when they migrated to the north, they didn't talk a lot about what they left behind. It was a new time. And so to have the week this Sunday, to be able to stand in that space and to recognize that this is where black people were educated when they couldn't be educated anyplace else. And particularly the sort of the, the, the history of Charlottesville and Albemarle and being a, resist, a place of resistance, that I would just encourage you, as, as Jody has indicated, to, to tell your story and to tell the story of that place and the people who went through there and the way and lives that they were shaped through that school, because it is a story worth knowing and a story worth telling. And I, and I, wish, you, I wish you great success as you continue with this process. That's the end of my point of personal privilege. Thank you for in, indulging me, everyone, and um, good night and have, have a good have a rest of, good rest of your evening. Thank you very much for bringing this to us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Okay, so we are now going to we get to see Thank someone you. who we don't get to see very often. Yeah, Bivens. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. On the on the uh, chat, I put the uh, address for people who are interested in more information. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So if you need to click it, and it'll take you to the website, and then we can hold on to it for for later. But thank you for that.
Um, may we have the staff report for SE 2020019, Christian Aid Mission Special Exception for Disturbance of Critical Slopes. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can you see the presentation? Can see it. Good to okay, see you, good. sir. Good to see you. Good. To, well, I, I think it's good to be back. We'll see. Good to be seen, right? It's good to be seen. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, this is uh, this special exception request is to allow the disturbance of critical slopes on um, tax map parcel 5923G, which is the current location of the Christian Aid mission uh, and also the Regent School. Um, the purpose of the uh, request is to allow for the construction of a new entrance onto Broomley Road. Uh, the property uh, is zone CO commercial. It also is within the entrance quarter overlay district and the steep slopes overlay district. Um, this area is actually within, although zoned um, for development is in our uh, rural area and is designated as rural area property. Again, the proposal uh, is to allow for an entrance onto Broomley Road. Um, a critical slope waiver request is required as per 18.423 of the ordinance. Um, the property um, is located um, on Route 2, 250 in Broomley Road uh, is on the western boundary. This is a look at the property. Um, vicinity map, uh, which also shows the zoning for the area. To the east of the property is commercial properties, a tractor uh, dealership, and also a um, church. To the west is Ivy Nursery. To the north are rural or residential neighborhoods, Floridan and part of Farmington. And to the south is rural area uses and agricultural and open space area. This is an aerial photo of the property. Um, the area uh, that is being impacted is the area in the top uh, center left side of, of the photo. Uh, Route 250 to the south, Broomley Road to the left, and uh, the building on the far left edge is Ivy Nursery. Uh, this is a shot of the improvement area. Um, also a cross section and a larger uh, photo of the area highlighting the critical slope portions that will be impacted. And if you have a larger picture of it, we can come back to these as needed if you have questions or wanna discuss these uh, as we move forward. Um, to provide a little bit of history um, that's relevant to this proposal in 2014, a critical slope waiver request was submitted in conjunction with a special use permit 2014-05. That special permit was for the expansion of Regent School. And it was to allow access to Broomley Road. In part, it was a way to address traffic concerns with that school expansion. The Board of Supervisors uh, denied that prior special exception critical slope waiver request, noting uh, the proposal would fa facilitate intensification of use of the property contrary to the comprehensive plan policies uh, for preserving the character, uh, rural area character of the area. Uh, again, this review was in conjunction with that special use permit expansion request for uh, the private school. Um, as noted in the applicant's narrative, some board members did note that the timing um, for the uh, closure of the Broomley Road Bridge at that time for reconstruction was a concern that they had in approving that new entrance at that time. Um, to, to close the history on the special use permit, uh, the special use permit was approved for the expansion of Regent School, but a sunset was placed on it uh, at the time that said they would need to leave the site within three years. That sunset was rescinded in 2017 uh, so they could actually stay on that site uh, indefinitely, but the school has purchased another property in the county and with the hopes of relocating in the future. Uh, the specifics of this proposal, um, 
about um, a little bit less than 5,000 square feet of critical slopes would be impacted, uh, not quite 1% of the 12 acre parcel. Uh, the impacted slopes are mostly man-made and related and have been related over a number of years to the construction of Broomley Road, an old access road adjacent to the railroad tracks, the railroad track itself, and the recent bridge upgrading um, had um, some uh, leftover uh, fill area, I think, was deposited in this general area, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there are no other critical slope or critical resources uh, that are identified or located adjacent to these particular critical slope areas, such as floodplain or stream buffer. Um, I will note, though, this entire area is in our South Fork Ravana River watershed, which is uh, an area of, of uh, protection, uh, a level of protection we want to uh, make sure that we cover. Uh, the access road on the site um, onto Broomley Road and the entrance itself um, is in a location where it can meet county and VDOT uh, design requirements. In reviewing uh, waiver requests, the county engineer reviews aspects of the proposal um, under the noted uh, zoning ordinance section, and they look at the impacts to movement of soil and rock, excessive stormwater runoff, siltation, loss of aesthetic resources, and effluent. Uh, the full commission, uh, engineer's report is in the Planning Commission staff report, but their conclusion uh, was that there's no engineering concerns that would prohibit uh, the disturbance of these critical slopes. And Matt Whitland from our county engineer's office is here if you have questions regarding that or uh, any issues related to the uh, proposed construction to the extent that uh, that's been evaluated at this time. Uh, in making this, uh, the, in taking a decision, the commission on this proposal, the commission and the board um, have to consider in, um, their decision based on uh, certain findings contained in uh, this section of the ordinance. And um, the waivers can be granted if there's no detrimental, um, if there's a finding that there is no detrimental impact to health, public safety and welfare, orderly development of the area or to adjacent properties and that it would not be contrary to engineering practices. Um, staff in, this, in the staff report has provided an assessment of those uh, areas and the findings. I don't know if I wanna go through every bit of these in this presentation, but certainly can answer questions regarding them. Um, but the conclusion was that um, many of these slopes are man-made and been reconstructed areas um, and that granting of the waiver could better serve the public health, safety, and welfare by allowing for a safer alternative access to a signalized intersection, which would provide for safer development to the site. Um, that is uh, in regards to uh, finding A, which is a strict application would not for the purposes and intent of the ordinance or otherwise serve health, public safety, or welfare. Uh, the finding B, um, the alternatives proposed by the developer would satisfy um, uh, the ordinance, the intent of the ordinance uh, to at least an equivalent degree. Um, there have been no alternatives provided that would have no impact to critical slopes. There was another option for design that was looked at that would have greater impacts to critical slopes. And it also should be noted that any location of any new entrance on the Broomley Road would impact some level of critical slopes uh, since most of the abutting property uh, has critical slopes related to it. Um, the findings and areas to evaluate in C and D um, that there are unusual uh, characteristics to the property um, that or conditions that would um, that prohibiting the disturbance of the critical slopes would create an unreasonable ability to use the property. That is not the case uh, in this proposal. And D, granting the modification or wa waiver would serve the public purpose to a greater um, uh, degree than strict application of these regulations. 
again, this, this disturbance would be necessary to allow for a safer access to uh, intersection on to Route 250. And uh, all the points made under A would also be applicable to, again, uh, the public safety aspect of this proposal. So the factors favorable, um, the relatively small area of disturbed critical slopes is mostly man-made and uh, not directly associated with other critical slope systems. The county engineers have identified no engineering concerns, uh, which would prohibit the disturbance of these critical slopes to allow for the entrance. Uh, the disturbance of critical slopes would allow for the construction of an alternative access, which would be better and more safely accommodate traffic generated uh, by the uses on the site. Uh, and the pro proposed entrance location can meet uh, both county and VDOT uh, uh, standards for uh, construction. The uh, factors unfavorable is that the additional entrance uh, would introduce uh, additional traffic onto Broomley Road. Um, again, should be noted that the 250 entrance, uh, the existing entrance on 250 will be retained, uh, which would mitigate uh, that additional traffic impact. Uh, so uh, based on the findings uh, contained in the report, staff has recommended approval of this special exception request uh, with this condition, which is um, uh, uh, reflecting a, an exhibit that just identifies the area that's proposed for construction. I have motions for you when the time um, is right for those, uh, and I'll answer any questions that you might have. If you'd like to go back to a, a plan, just let me know, I'll scroll back to that. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions for David? Folks? And can, uh, David, would you unshare, share your screen for a second so I, can, so I might see everyone, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions for David? So we have Karen, and then we have Danny. Yes. Um Mr. Banish, did, did the applicant say, I know they talked about, we talked about the fact that the school had, you know, found another place, but I mean, and they, and they need this new entrance for other uses, but do we, do we know what those other uses are? I guess I'm, I'm not clear, you know, obviously there's some need generated for this new bigger entrance, and I'm trying to understand what that is. Probably have the applicant is best to uh, respond to that. We, as far as I know, we have no specific um, proposal, request, or application for a different use on the site. Um, I believe the, the property is being marketed, though. The uses that okay. could be anticipated are those that are permitted under that CO zoning. Um, so there, you know, there's a range of office. Uh, and service and some level of retail uses, commercial uses that could be permitted by right within the site. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Daniel? Just a couple of questions on, are, I'm trying to decipher the, the plans a bit. Um, it's a mounded area there. It kind of comes up the slope and it's mounded to get back to Broomley is a significant mm -hmm. drop. So is, is the plan to, cut the road in and put some, I, I saw like it was just a step back. Are they just stepping it back? Are they putting retaining walls in to? Yeah, again, I think the applicant will probably be best to explain that. The cross section that was shown actually just showed grades. Yeah. Um, I don't believe there's any retaining walls proposed at this point in time. Um, again, uh, Matt Wintland from our county in, um, engineer's office may be available and the applicant will probably go into that with their presentation. I, but I don't think that there are retaining walls at least proposed at this point in time. Okay, so they so to maximize visibility if someone's coming out of that interest to turn on Broomley, they're gonna try to grade it back to reduce the height so you can actually see from your car up and down Broomley? Yeah, and that would be a requirement of VDOT to meet the permitting requirement. Um, and uh, Adam Moore from VDOT is also here and available to answer those questions. But yeah, they would have to have, the site distance is roughly equivalent to that 10 times the posted speed limit. So 
um, whatever that requirement is by VDOT, they will have to meet and there'll be site distance requirements in, in both directions. Okay, and that's figured into how much of the critical scope so would be? Yes, it's my understanding that in the county and engineers review of it, um, they did assess the feasibility of the um, access road so that, you know, we have a realistic proposal for what could be built and what that impact is on the critical slopes at 4,950 square feet. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Could, could if, if Adam Moore is here, could we hear a little bit about the, that intersection there? If I'm understanding it, David, it's still gonna be a right in, right out, the first, the first intersection. The existing entrance off of Ivy Road, Route 250. So uh, right in or right out? It, right now, uh, with the approval of um, the Regent School, they were required to put in channelization. What that channelization does is restricts lefts out. It allows lefts into the site, but not lefts out, which would be lefts towards the city. Currently, that traffic, if you're wanting to head towards the city, you have to make a right and do a U-turn at some location. Uh, that's a requirement of the special use permit for the private school. Uh, once the private school uh, vacates the site, uh, that channelization uh, would not be necessary because the use that requires it would no longer be there. So, Adam Moore, if you would talk to us about that intersection, please, as it is today, and what you might expect if this were to go forward. As David explained with the restricted movements at the one existing entrance, what you see is really a lack of opportunities for people heading east from the site to turn around. Mm -hmm. You may remember that there has been public concerns in the past about people taking U-turns at unsafe locations. Mm -hmm. Those complaints have died down somewhat, but the fact remains that there's no good place to make a U-turn anywhere immediately west of here. Mm -hmm. the, look, the presence of this location would mean that uh, people exiting this site could easily access the signal um, mm -hmm. and, and go eastbound with few hurdles. Mm -hmm. do, do you have accident data for that intersection? I, I, I do. saw the scatter map, but I was having a hard time reading the legend. Yes, so I would describe this as um, pretty typical for a rural signalized uh, two lane intersection. Mm -hmm. In the last five years, there's been approximately 13 crashes the great majority of which are rear end crashes, which is what we expect at traffic signals. When you introduce a traffic signal, people not paying attention come up on a red light and hit the person right in front of them who stopped for the signal. Very few of the crashes at the intersection are related to this site or the, in, the existing entrance. Uh, you have, there's only been, uh, actually three of the 13 were not rear end most were just property damage, so minor mm -hmm. crashes is another reason, another thing that we uh, expect at signalized intersections. The crashes, uh, there's a lot of crashes, but uh, oftentimes they're less severe because you know rear end crashes are just generally mm -hmm. not as severe. Um, and then there's always you know a few crashes at every intersection that are uh, sort of wild card, uh, hard to explain or not really attributable to the anything about the intersection. Does anyone have uh, any other questions before we go to the applicant? Where's the gentleman from the engineering? So Matt Wentland, could you could you speak to Commissioner Bailey's question about what that slope's going to what you've seen when you when you evaluated the slope, please? Uh, what they provided is they were doing um, just an upgrading to get the road in. I mean, I didn't see where they were knocking down a mound uh, more than what they had to. Uh, it was just to meet our uh, slope requirements on the road itself. <clears throat> Excuse me. And just the minimum disturbance possible. Daniel, is that okay? Did you get your, okay. Anyone else before we let the applicant come in for, for their time, for their comments to us? 
May we hear from the applicant, please? Would you state your name and the organization you're with, please? Good evening, Chair Bivens and members of the Planning Commission. My name is Kelsey Schlein. I'm a planner with Schimp Engineering. I'm here tonight representing the property owner and applicant, Christian Aid Mission. I'm just gonna share my screen with you all. Perfect. Okay, so uh, thank you for the staff report, David. Um, so this is a, a request for, for critical slope disturbance. The 12 acre site is located at the intersection of Route 250 and Broomley Road, um, adjacent to Ivy Nursery. Uh, some site characteristics, the total site is 12 acres. Uh, according to County GIS, the site area designated as critical slopes is approximately 3.03 acres, which is 25% of the site. And the area of slopes requested to be disturbed with this request is uh, just under 5,000 square feet, which is approximately 3.7% of total slopes on the site. Uh, this map down here uh, is showing in orange the critical slopes that are present on the site. Uh, they kind of wrap around the developed areas of, of the property uh, and extend along the entirety of Broomley Road here. Um, as uh, Mr. Benish alluded to, the any entrance off of, of Broomley Road would necessitate disturbance of, of critical slopes. So the project proposal here, um, where the, the entrance spacing uh, for the new entrance exceeds VDOT spacing standards um, of, of 440 feet for, for this entrance location. Um, and uh, Matt already, already clarified this for, for you, Mr. Bailey, but there's, there's no um, rotating walls proposed. The goal here was really to, uh, you know, create an entrance to allow for a safer controlled out left movement at uh, the, the intersection of Broomley and Route 250 um, and, and to minimize disturbance of critical slopes in order to, to achieve that traffic maneuver. Um, so so there, there's, we're disturbing kind of just enough to get our entrance and travel way in there. And I'll, later on in the presentation, I'll go through a few design iterations that we presented to the county um, that ultimately got us to the lowest critical slopes disturbance of 4950 that we're, that we're requesting from you all tonight. Uh, so this is just a cross section showing that the proposed construction is a cut uh, instead of a fill. Um, so cutting into the slopes here, there's less likelihood uh, for, for increased erosion uh, when compared to uh, placing fill on a slope here. This is just a quick little doodle kind of showing approximately where the entrance will go off of Broomley Road, extending up into the site. And this little black hatched uh, area is just approximately showing the area where the slopes exist that are proposed to be disturbed. Um, this is also a, a good image to, to speak to the fact that much of these slopes in this area uh, were disturbed um, during the, in you know, 2014, 2015, during the reconstruction of the Broomley Bridge here. Um, you can see the silt fences along uh, the, the property line here and along the, the access road back to the stormwater facility. And you can see that there was uh, some recent grading done just before this, this image was taken. Um, it's also uh, the, the, the site is nearby to, to the railroad and, um, and uh, Broomley Bridge as well. So these are just some images of, of the slopes um, as how, how they look today. Um, with just some arrows showing the approximate entrance location. So you kind of see it's not incredibly steep here. I believe most of the slopes in this area just um, are, are mostly in the in the 25% to, to you know, 27, 28% range. They're um, not, not incredibly steep in this area. Uh, an additional, this is an image uh, looking from the site, kind of at the top of the slope towards the bridge this is the Ivy Nursery entrance over here. And this is just kind of 
in the slope looking at the, the riprap channel that was constructed um, or, or reconstructed during the reconstruction of Broom Libra Bridge, the fence over here is along, along Ivy Nursery. So going through a few design iterations that we presented, um, it, was, it was proposed to us by the county to consider um, placing an entrance location, perhaps where the existing access way to the stormwater facility is. Um, so we, we, we explored that option um, that resulted in a significant more amount of a uh, greater amount of critical slopes disturbance almost 17,000 square feet compared to the just under 5,000 that we're requesting. Uh, additionally, we were requesting approximately 5,500 square feet of disturbance. Um, we got a, a, a very helpful comment um, from, from engineering just to think through um, just how uh, some water would run across this, this slope here in, in the future. And that prompted us to put in a curb along this side here. And that also allowed us to tighten up the grade even more, uh, further reducing our critical slope disturbance. So we really feel that the proposal that we're presenting to you tonight, um, we worked through, county staff has reviewed several times and, and we're, we're thankful for that because I think we've ultimately uh, come up with a design um, that, that, that really limits critical slopes disturbance here. Um, and uh, as David mentioned, the, the proposal was reviewed, and I think some of you all even reviewed it back in um, 2014. Um, some, some changes, uh, the, the major changes since that 2014 request is the construction of the Broomley Road Bridge. It is noted in the board minutes that several of the board members um, uh, had, had a little bit of heartburn about the premature nature of approving the disturbance of critical slopes. Um, to permit an entrance in a location that perhaps we wouldn't be happy with uh, at some point down, down the road. Um, additionally, the, the entrance location as proposed now um, meets VDOT standards. With the construction of the Broomley Road Bridge, um, we, we were able to move that entrance further down um, to the northern property line um, and, and meet VDOT standards. It's also noted in the minutes that it was um, a, a, a great concern of neighbors uh, to be pursuing that VDOT waiver in this location, um, especially uh, just, just some concern about uh, potential rear end collisions from, from neighbors along Broomley Road for, for people turning in too closely um, to an entrance that was sited per, too closely to the intersection of Route 250 and Broomley. So um, we're meeting VDOT entrance spacing standards and um, uh, with, with this request. Um, so, you know, in conclusion, please consider the man-made nature um, of the majority of these slopes and that strict adherence to the requirements to not disturb the critical slopes uh, would not forward the purpose of this chapter uh, or, or serve the public health, safety, and welfare as there are no environmentally sensitive features that are in the vicinity of the project area that would be negatively impacted by the disturbance of the slopes. Um, granting of this waiver would better serve the health, safety, and general welfare by allowing for users exiting the site to make a controlled left out movement uh, at the intersection of Route 250 and Broomley. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present, um, and I am available for any questions you may have. Uh, Justin Shimp, project engineer, is also on the call as well. Thank you. Are there questions for Ms. Line? Karen, and we'll start with Karen. Yes, my question is, what, if any, conflicts do you anticipate with locating your new entrance across from a busy plant nursery? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you for the question. So there, uh, we actually did um, receive a comment from VDOT uh, early on just to consider if there would be any conflicting left movements. So uh, I, I think the, the, you know, the real conflict point that would happen from being located, having an entrance located across from Ivy Nur Nursery would be um, somebody making a left out of Ivy Nursery um, and then also making a, well, I guess they would be, yes, making a, a left out um, of, 
the Christian Aid mission site. And so the entrances are sited um, kind of outside of that conflict zone. I think that was kind of one of the initial concerns that that was brought up um, and uh, this design and spacing uh, meets the requirements to avoid that situation. And additionally, Commissioner Firehawk, I'm sorry I didn't answer your question um, during my presentation. So if I may I just respond to, to the future user um, that a, a future user has, has not been identified at this time. Um, if any buy right user or future user on, on the property, I think would, would much appreciate this, this entrance and the option to allow people um, who are utilizing the site to make that controlled left movement so that they can head back into town. Um, and this is kind of really spurred by um, you know, Regent School having, having a new site, perhaps moving off. And um, as, as Mr. Benish said, if there was you know, any, any opportunity or chance of the school remaining on the site, the special use permit would also have to be amended because this entrance is inconsistent with their approved concept plan. Thanks. Other questions for the applicant? Ms. Line, this is a two. This is an in and out entrance, so it will both let people so enter the property and also exit the property. Correct, full access. Mm -hmm. Daniel, can you go back to uh, the placement? I know you showed some options, and, you, and one was it, to serve more critical slopes, as you as been kind of historically, and you can confirm those slopes were previously disturbed. Uh, for other purposes. So they're not, you know, preserving per se. Um, I'm just, I just want to get a sense from yours and the discussion once again from VDOT of, and kind of coming back to what Commissioner Firehawk was alluding to is like having a staggered in and out with a busy nursery and the potential that may cause from people, like you said, turning right out of the nursery to get back to 250 and someone turning left across and not seeing them and you're not right across from them, you're staggered by some distance. Um, I, I just walk, walk me through what the decision criteria was not to go with this iteration that you see here. Was it mainly due to the critical slopes aspect and the amount of critical slopes uh, affected or was there a public safety or concern and how did that weigh? Was it, what was the decision, what was the discussion and the decision criteria around the decision for the, you know, the final iteration you're showing us of fine fortunately? Sure. Uh, so it, it was mainly around the, the disturbance of, of critical, critical slopes. Um, but additionally, that um, existing entrance is, is just kind of like an access road to, to a stormwater facility. Um, and so there was some concern just about upgrading that to like a, or, or a portion of that um, to uh, like a full access entrance and just exactly how those would function um, together. And so ultimately it was decided that I, ideally we keep these two items, the, the access to the stormwater management facility and access to the site separate. Um, and if, uh, Justin or Adam, if you all are both involved as well, if there's anything additional to, to add to that, please chime in. And if they do, if you could speak to this, the second part of the question, which is the discussion around, you know, potential impacts of safety of having these two staggered uh, entrances on the Brindley Road from Irene Nursery and, and this site. Yeah, um, I, I, this, uh, the, the entrance location and, and, and kind of how, how these entrances uh, interact with, with one another has been, been reviewed by, uh, by VDOT. And so um, at, a, at, a, at, a, at this phase and, and um, you know, any, any entrance permit ultimately uh, is, is going to be granted by them. And so, with, you know, at this point, we haven't been made aware of any conflicts that would occur with, with the entrance across the street. Yeah, I'll just add that uh, we focused in on limiting the impacts uh, and grading in the water supply watershed. And, and so the reduced area of grading was beneficial to us. It's our understanding that the offset uh, is conceivably acceptable under VDOT standards. Adam can speak better to that. I do know from some history that there has been some discussion that offset intersections may actually be just as safe or no more dangerous than uh, aligned intersections because the 
the same lack of visibility can occur when two people not looking at each other making a turn when they're offset there's actually margin for error for that sort of uh, activity to occur but uh, that's something probably better for Adam to speak to but our understanding was the offset was um, acceptable to VDOT um, um, pending you know further detailed planning. Daniel, you okay? Do you want to hear? Yeah, I, I don't know if Adam wants to respond to that. It was yeah, just confirming. I, re I reviewed the yeah. entrance location. Uh, the entrance across the street is not a significant concern. This is a very low volume road and uh, relatively low volume entrances and there shouldn't be too many conflicting movements and uh, especially with lack of concentrated uh, peak times of travel uh, not being aligned as well. Thank you. Other questions for the applicant? Carolyn, do we have anyone in the uh, in the audience, in the public? No, we do not. Okay. Uh, before we bring it up to bring it back to us, would the uh, Kelsey, would you like to uh, close with any remarks? Um, I, I, nothing additional to to add. But thank you so much for the opportunity to present um, at this application to you tonight. Thank you. So we'll bring it back to us for discussion. Commissioners, what are your thoughts on this? Rick, and then whom else? Rick, and then and then Tim. Rick and Tim. I am I am delighted to see this before us this evening because when we last reviewed this as a planning commission in 2014, um, many of us were concerned from a safety standpoint of traffic going on to 250 from the site, especially because of the exponential growth of the school and kudos to the school for that growth. Um, I'm delighted that they've found a larger facility. I think I said at the time in 2014, I hope that as they continued to grow, they would be able to identify mm -hmm. another campus in Albemarle County and they've done that. Um, and I'm very happy for the school that that's happened. I'm also happy for um, the traffic flow on 250 as a result of that happening. Therefore, there will be fewer U-turns um, as a result uh, of the future use of the site. Uh, I do wanna say that I think given the fact that the Broomley Bridge enhancement and uh, redevelopment has occurred, this is the appropriate and logical and really owed next step for this site, regardless of who uses the site from a public safety standpoint, this will be a major enhancement of safety mm -hmm. um, in, on, the, on this uh, particular site. So, um, the fact that they've worked to go from almost 17,000 square feet of disturbance down to just under 5,000 square feet of disturbance is a really forward step because it's something that we did agonize over in 2014 of any impact to the critical slopes. And uh, therefore, uh, I just wanna say that I think it, it's a solid proposal and it, it has, uh, my enthusiastic support. Thank you. Tim. I served on the planning commission in that time with Rick and uh, he has done a, a very fine job of summarizing the situation as we saw it. There was a lot of discussion and, and a lot of positive mm -hmm. feeling about moving traffic onto Broomley Road, but then the issues of the slopes came in and the supervisors weighed in. I agree that this is the time to, to go forward with this and I support it. And when you're ready, if you wish, I could make a motion. Any, anyone else want to feel like they'd like to come forward with a comment? No one else. I, I will simply say that um, I, I mean, Ivy Nursery is the nursery that I sort of am in and out a lot. I know it's hard to believe that I'm a gardener, but yeah, I, I am in and out of Ivy Nursery a lot. And 
The one thing I can say is that it makes sense when you come to that entrance there to just look slightly right and left. And that entrance would be a, that sort of, it would catch your eye, catch, it would catch one's eye as opposed to looking straight ahead because you're looking up, you're looking to see if something comes down. So I also thought I wasn't on the planning commission, but I also thought having it a bit set, offset actually works for the way I come to that entrance. The one time I would say that it will be a little challenging there, but you know, that's no different is around the uh, Christmas holiday. Because if any of you have witnessed how they move vehicles through uh, Ivory Nursery getting, getting um, I guess we can call them Christmas trees, getting Christmas trees through there, it is quite a production. But that's also for the people coming down Bromley too. They have to, they have to deal with that. So that would be the only time that I think you'd see the, the sort of level of traffic that I think a number of us might have been concerned with. The other thing that I actually am speaking in support of this, with uh, Northridge becoming both uh, sort of uh, the, the, the Western clinics and also the rehabilitation hospital and also the cancer hospital over there, there's a lot of traffic that was there that probably wasn't there in 2014 when, when our two colleagues were reviewing this, this proposal. So anything that would keep some of the um, that would help to mitigate some of the traffic flow going directly on the two, um, on the 250. I, I think this project would, does that and would be helpful and help and helping to bring a bit more sort of logic to the way people get in and out of that particular quadrant over there. So I too, it's 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 clearly my district, but I too would support this. And Tim, I, if we do get to that point, I'd appreciate it if you would make that make that make that uh, move that for us, if you would please. So anyone else feel like they have? a moment or a comment. Well then, oh, Daniel. I'll be brief as today, I peppered with questions. I'm very comfortable, I just want to understand and, and hear the logic. So as, as already said, uh, as long as, you know, anything to get off 250 is a win in my book <laughs> to get some of the traffic off. And so I hope I really support this. I just want to understand, make sure that what the decision was between just how much critical slopes was versus other other factors. So thank you for that. And I wholeheartedly support this. And you have every right to ask all the questions you want. Also know that. So you don't have to apologize to us. Ask questions. Anyone else? Well, I guess, uh, let's see. David, could you put up? Oh, there you go. Would you, someone, Tim, please. Okay. I move to recommend approval of SE 2020 Christian Aid Mission Critical Slope Waiver for the reasons stated in the staff report with the following condition. The area of land disturbance on critical slopes must be in general accord with the critical slopes disturbance section AA exhibit prepared by Shimp Engineering TC dated October 26, 2020, revised April 22nd, 2021. Second. Seconded by Rick. Thank you, Rick, and thank you, Tim. Can you now take that away, sir? Are there any other, is there any further discussion? I can't see. Oh, there you are. Is there any discussion? Carolyn, would you call the roll, please? Yes, Mr. Bailey. Aye. Mr. Keller. Aye. Ms. Firehawk. Uh, sorry, unmuting. Aye. Mr. Randolph. Aye. Mr. Bivens. Aye. Ms. Moore. Aye. And Mr. Claiborne. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Kelsey, as you've heard, this is going forward. We're recommending, our recommending is that we're supporting this. So go forward to the supervisors. And I don't need to tell you, you know what to do from here to there. Just make sure that you and Mr. Banish uh, are connected on this. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Do we have any committee reports? Yes. Okay, so we have a Tim and we have a Corey. Corey? Oh, sorry, I thought I was second. I thought Tim was first. Well, you did, but I, yeah, I put you first because because Tim had his Tim Tim had, Tim had it was sort of giving you a chance because he, he didn't move his hand from his chin. That was like Corey. 
All right, no, no worries, Mr. Chairman. So um, I attended the Places 29 CAC meeting on May the 13th. And if you all recall, the, the RST project uh, was on 29 North, um, right near Ash Ashwood, I believe, Boulevard. Um, so they, the, the developers went back and made some, some changes to that. And uh, so it'll be coming back before us. Uh, some of the changes is that they reduced the number of units from 370 to 340. Um, there's now um, two five-story buildings that kind of was the hub, if you will, of the project, um, but step back, um, I think, on the fifth floor. And it was uh, now they have three four-story buildings in the back, so they reduced the number of buildings. They've increased the, the green space and buffers and so forth, so it'll look a little different when it comes back, but um, I think it was a relatively positive meeting. Um, I remember when we came before us last time, I believe two HOAs came back and in pretty strong force uh, in opposition. And so there wasn't much opposition. Um, I just, I got to probably be careful how I say that. There wasn't many op opposing comments, if you will, at the CAC. Doesn't mean people aren't holding back, but it, it was a much different flavor, if you will, than when it came before us. Uh, so that will be on the lookout for that. Thank you, Tim. Uh MPO Tech was quite interesting today, and a, a lot of it, um, there were two, two presentations in particular that I'd like to share with you briefly. The first one was um, a, a PhD student in engineering at UVA who, for her master's work, did an analysis of bicycle accidents in our area. I think that a lot of us are interested in knowing more details of the real story, as opposed to all the anecdotal. And um, I believe that that is going to be made available on her presentation is going to be made available on the website. Um, some interesting, some interesting takeaways from that, um, that they're actually more Let's see, they, there were different ratings, but there, I don't necessarily mean fatal, but there were more severe bicycle accidents involving alcohol uh, with bicycles. We think about alcohol with the drivers, but actually there's a significant percentage of, of accidents that are involved with the cyclists and alcohol. So that was an interesting one. And, and the Commonwealth doesn't have laws against cyclists um, being out, uh, being inebriated the way it does for automobiles. And there's maybe pluses and minuses to that that she went into. So I, I just do that as kind of a tease to say there was interesting information. It was from several years back. It was old data. And there were there are a number of people on MPO Tech and I know CTAC from before that would like to see a much more robust study um, done for our area um, to get into this. It, it, it was not, a, it, was a, it was a funding priority that was put forward by MPO Tech that was not picked up by MPO, but there are some extra monies. And so I would like to think that maybe something will come of that. So again, this is more of a, go ahead, Rick. No, you go ahead, Tim. Okay. Um, I think, I, I think that it would be, behoove us maybe we should maybe we should talk to Charles and Charles should talk to Kevin and we should um, invite this individual to do the presentation mm -hmm. there's enough meat to it that me trying to regurgitate wouldn't be useful at this point the second one is one that will be um, the second major piece was um, about smart scale round five mm -hmm. and of course, that's going to be discussed by the supervisors tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's kind of early to say there seemed to be agreement with city and county representatives that um, places that we can think of to the south of Charlottesville are important, but projects to the north are important to the county and maybe less important to the to the city for different reasons um, and and there seem to be um, 
more money that's that's coming forward, as we all know, with maybe finding some more money at the state level. Mm -hmm. So maybe a lot of these things are going to be accomplished and there isn't going to be a, a trade off. But a lot of interesting and thoughtful planning action for 250 East um, is looking to be around the corner. So those are the things that, that I and I took away that I thought you all would be interested in hearing about. Rick? Uh, on Saturday, I was out on the roads of Matthew County and the Middle Peninsula with 600 plus other cyclists. Mm. And Tim, I think it's really good that you brought this up. Um, my concern is gonna be with legalization of marijuana given the fact that we don't have many dedicated trails, Capitol Trail and a trail down um, um, near Blacksburg. But outside of that, you know, most cyclists have to use roads and we're gonna have people uh, smoking dope. We already have that right now, riding bikes, uh, mixing that with alcohol. Mm -hmm. And two absolutely critical things that I observed over the weekend. Number one, everybody riding on public roads needs to have a blinking red light on the back of their bicycle mm -hmm. to help identify themselves from motorists who oftentimes are distracted mm -hmm. on their cell phone um, and not paying attention much to the road. And secondly, um, having observed this firsthand because I was the person coming the opposite direction, having a group of cyclists riding two or three abreast on a narrow road leads to an impatient driver who then swings around and, you know, woe be you if you're coming the opposite direction on a bicycle and this chap missed me by several inches as I was going the opposite direction. So, you know, cyclists have some responsibility here to know the, the, the laws of the road and also the rules of the road and to extend courtesy to drivers and drivers in turn to extend courtesy to bicyclists. But I look forward to that study when, when you go ahead and release it. I did have one correction I wanted to make and because I'm reading the minutes from last week, it's even more um, alarming to me is I gave you the wrong figure for Breezy Hill. It will be 80 units that they are proposing, um, not 69 that I said, and therefore it's higher than the actual by right. It kind of looks like it's by right. You could look at it as super by right, um, but it, it still is 80 units. So we'll be talking more about that. The CAC, um, as you know, met and had a discussion last Monday about that. So we'll go forward from that. Thank you. Anyone else have a committee report? I can share that the um, Places 29 Hydraulic Community uh, CAC met last night, and we received a, a sort of a long, a long report, informative report from the South Ravana Reservoir to Ragged Mountain Reservoir Raw Water Line Project. I, I don't know. I mean, probably I don't remember us ever seeing that on the commission. I. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm looking for heads that were wiser than me on this to sort of say yes or no or maybe. But it's the it's the pipeline going from the South Ravana over to Ragged Mountain. And I don't know if we've ever seen it, but at some point it might be interesting just for our own knowledge to be able to have. It's not interesting or we've never seen it. We've never seen it. Oh, it's neither. It's not interesting, nor is it, nor have we ever seen it. <laughs> nor, nor may I add, to, in my knowledge, did the board see it in the in the four years I was on the board? Oh, you, what? You're saying the supervisors haven't seen it either? No, I haven't seen that study. Oh, well, Mr. Rapp, perhaps in one of our conversations with Ms. Vyhawk, we should talk about that. It's, it's you know, there's, there's, there's a... I think it would be informative for the planning commission to at least know about the water supply. There's there is really nothing in our purview there, except that it's something that we should know as we're looking at how they're how they're sort of building out. Because believe it or not, most of it's going down V dot. It's going down V dot right away. 
there's a few pieces there of private property and some in, institutional property, but most of this is going down VDOT, uh, VDOT uh, um, right away. And so, so if we can put that on our um, on our on our discussion about possible presentations, I think that would be helpful for us to do. I was I was pleased to see it, but I was also, I will share just sort of basically I was kind of surprised at the magnitude of this project and particularly now if you're telling me the supervisors have never seen that I really am surprised by the magnitude of this project. But there we go. Just to be clear, you're talking about from the South Ravana Reservoir to Ragged Mountain, that connector. Correct. That connection, and I, that unless, pipeline. Unless that the board has seen it in one year and sure. five months that I was not part of the board, yep. um, I can assure you that during the time period I was on the board, we never saw that. Okay, well then hopefully- We had, we it, we had a presentation about it, but we never saw the detailed map of all, all the properties. Well, it'd be interesting to see that then. Okay, well then I'm glad I brought it up. So if we can discuss that. And so that's, that's all I'd share from that meeting. Anyone else? Cool, look at this, look at us. It's 726. Jenny, don't you want to say any, any, any? Yes. <laughs> okay. um, well, then on that, it seems, the, is there any old business or new business? Uh, Chair Bivens, if I could have a moment to, to uh, touch base on our schedule, upcoming schedule. Um, uh, work I don't session. know, you're not, on, you're not on this agenda, so I don't know if uh, I'm uh, correct. <laughs> I'm hoping you'll give me a pass. <laughs> um, uh, well, I will say so. Work set. We, I have work sessions kind of uh, planned out for y'all for the next two to three months, just to let you know. So, and then we've got this little thing called the comp plan coming our way uh, that is going to consume our work sessions for quite a while. But on that topic, uh, our Crozet Master Plan team—they're um, planning to come to y'all in June eighth. Uh, to talk about the implementation section and the overall draft of the whole plan. Uh, later this month, we plan to uh, have another meeting out with the Crozet community, as well as a couple of pop-ups out there to uh, engage them on the implementation components. Uh, and then, like I said, it's time to wrap it all up into one final draft uh, that we'd like to bring back to the commission in June. Um, our June schedule tentatively had a work session on the 8th. Uh, we have two open dates in June. One is the 22nd and the 29th. They have asked if, if possible, could we move that work session in June to the 22nd, just to give them a little more time in between the outreach with the Crozet community and finalizing that chapter. Um, so I wanted to pose that to the commission uh, and see if June 22nd worked instead of the 8th for next month with our work session. And if so, I'd send out a uh, updated schedule here in the next a uh, few days for, for the month of June for y'all. Anyone have any objection to that? Okay, well, there you go. Uh, Karen, I see a finger. Uh, do we have any information about when we'll be coming back in person? Not at this time. I know the uh, the board has uh, the emergency ordinance on their agenda for tomorrow to discuss uh, what, if any changes are going to happen to that. Um, but as of now, no, no specific information. I assume we'll wait and see what they say tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. So then I guess you can, if you share with Rachel that we, we're, we're okay with that. And I, I want us to sort of just sort of be aware that we actually have done two chapters in the comp plan. We did the climate action one, which is going to, which is going to be incorporated into the comp plan. And we did the housing chapter, which is going to be incorporated, which we incorporated into the, to the, to the, to the comp plan. So, you know, as everything else in Albemarle County, we're ahead of everybody. So we're not going to stay there. I, I recognize that, but for right now, we're ahead of everybody. Um, so on that note, anyone, if anyone has nothing else to say, then I will say at 7.29, we're out of here, and we'll see you again on June the 1st at 6 o'clock. Is that OK? Is that OK? Everybody can deal with that? OK. Goodbye. I'll be on vacation that week, so you'll have to so excuse that's me right, I'm sitting on the Outer Banks, you know. On the outer banks. Uh, not thinking about you all, but I, you know, I will when I get back and before so you, I leave. I'll you, think about you, you a lot. So will the picture behind you change then when you come back? That's right. It'll yeah, yeah. It'll absolutely. We, we okay, will we'll, we will have we'll a more to that. That'll be instead of taffy, instead of uh 
salt taffy, tap, whatever. What's that stuff called? Yeah. Taffy salt? Yeah. Salt? It'll, it'll look more like this. Yeah. Oh, of course, you are no good. <laughs> You're moved, absolutely no good. <laughs> I move that we reconvene to the Outer Banks. I'm with you, Karen. Vacation home. Wait, so. are you have a vacation home there? Yeah, it's a, oh, no, I'm renting it. I don't know. Oh, it's like, uh, it is a six-bedroom home, but it's just me and my family, so there's plenty okay. of room. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone, be safe until we see you and, and uh, you know, see you on June 1st. And try and figure out what when we wear a mask and when we don't wear a mask. But in case you're, if you're in doubt, wear a mask. <laughs> in, if in doubt, wear a mask. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone. Night, everyone. There we go. OK. Charles. Charles, you're on mute. Well done. Another one. Not, Very good. Huh? not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. I can't believe